and it was the loving and what you're doing this is this is embracing grace is an amazing every church every church listen yeah i'm pro-life to my back teeth i think that abortion is is one of the biggest stains 60 oh, 61 million american babies have been murdered in america in abortion clinics 61 million Hitler killed 6 million Jews and we say he's the worst person that's ever lived and Americans with white coats and stethoscopes around their neck have killed 61 million of our babies and the church has got on our high horse and we've told how wrong this is but we don't take a girl that's in trouble into our house yeah and we don't make a space for her right and what you're doing Hal just just as I know it resounds in the heart of the Father that you are loving these kids and you love them to the cross. You can lecture sure. them and tell them how wrong they've, they've done and what, they, you know, that's not going to answer the need of their heart. And um, wow, what a tremendous concept. We've, seen, we've wow. seen dozens of young ladies choose life. Yeah. And, and, and we have a celebration of life. So whether the, the young mom keeps the baby yeah. and is able to care for the baby or they choose life and they they choose uh the the option of adoption that that route as well we just celebrate the fact that they they chose life absolutely and um, well, you know I, I was just this weekend we were baptizing um uh, individuals and and i looked up and i i met her before in the lobby and i thought wow here's an embrace grace mom yeah what an amazing testimony of God's faithfulness, of the church's love shown to her, yeah. um, it's it's truly amazing. So I, I and here I want to let the pastors know, like where where did I get this idea? Well, here's the truth: it wasn't my idea. My wife and I were in a restaurant in outside of I think Fort Worth, and uh, in, at, a, at a Gateway Church, a conference at Gateway Church. Pastor Robert Morris, amazing oh, yeah. church, great church. Um, they they. Um, we were, we were attending a conference and we were um, being served by this amazing waitress. And, um, and I said, you know, you just, you're just so beaming, you know, tell me, tell me your story. Cause I always like to hear people's story. <laughs> tell me your story. You're just beaming. You know, what, what do you do? And she goes, well, I'm, I'm finishing up college. I said, that's fantastic. And, and she said, well, my story is, um, um, you know, I, I I'm, was a young uh, unwed mother. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, Hey, do you have a good church? I was trying to connect him with the church. And because I was going to say, Hey, gateway church. And she said, gateway church saved my life. She said, they, they have this thing called embrace grace, a, a, not a class, but a, a, a group. It wasn't a, let me teach you a couple of things. Just let me walk with you. Yeah. A group that walked with me. And they threw me a, a baby shower. Well, my wife is across the table. She's just crying. You know, she's crying. And I'm like, Oh my oh, goodness, yeah. what an amazing testimony. Yeah. She goes, here's a, here's a picture of my son, gets her phone out. I said, he's so handsome, look at this little guy. And she she walks away, and as she walks away, we're at the table, my wife Sandra looks at me, she goes, Hal Hardy. <laughs> so when she uses my full name, I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. She said, Hal Hardy, when we get home, I know we're phone. looking into it. <laughs> so we did, we looked into it, we, we trained our leaders, we got a, a team of people that had a passion to do it. And I said, Let, let's, I know that there's a need. I know that there's a need. Uh, we, we live in the most affluent yeah. county in the state of Georgia, Forsyth mm -hmm. County. And many times we'll dismiss, well, that, that doesn't affect us. Oh, the truth is, Pastor, wherever you live, no matter Absolutely. how, how uh, affluent mm -hmm. you are, there is great need in your community. Absolutely. And every city has keys. I believe they have spiritual keys and they're, they're, they need to be met with serving. Yes, we can pray. Yes, we can preach. And yes, we're going to give uh, uh, so much time toward creating environments where where lost can come and find Jesus and, and, and the followers of Christ can come and get built up. But if you're waiting for the community to, if you're waiting for them to come to your church service and try to make it even better so they'll come, you're going to be waiting for a while. A what long they're long. waiting to do is they want to see, they're waiting to see if you love them. Absolutely. The way that you love them is not just creating a great atmosphere, even though that is a that is a portion. The yeah. way that you love them is you gotta you gotta get down on your hands and knees and serve. Yeah, yeah. I was at church and, and, and you're, you're, go well, ahead. So, yeah. no, you 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 do that and you you've modeled that 
literally for years. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm just amazed at, at the way that you, the longevity. And when you speak about Moldova and you speak about the girls, you, you do it as if, you do it as if you just began the journey. I feel because like there's so I, feel, I feel people say to me, because they've known me, I've been doing this. I adopted Andrew, who is sitting right there when he was three years of age. He, was, he began this. My dad called me and says, um, there are babies dying. I says, what? He says, I'm watching the BBC. This is from Scotland. And there are babies dying. And I says, what in the name of heavens are you talking about? He says there are in orphanages in Romania that are babies starving to death. And he, had, he was recovering from cancer surgery and the wound had opened and he was in terrible pain and, and a mess. And, and I, for a whole week, I put him off. You're sick. I'm busy. Leave this alone. The Red Cross does this. I'll send him a hundred dollars, you know. And um, one day he called me and he, on a Thursday, he says, well, I, I'm going. He says, I'm going by myself. And if I die on the way, it's your fault, but I'm going. And I says, oh, for goodness sake, man, stop it. And I mean, I'm on, I'm on every TV program. I'm selling this book, Household Salvation. I've, I've, I've got a Mercedes in the drive and a nice house with a pool. Every, every bucket list thing at 37, I've clicked, I'm done. I'm, yes. And uh, he, I fly home to Scotland. We go to Romania. We drive a truck all the way to Romania and walked in this place and the human, the smell of human waste. And I walked up the stairs into this room and there was about 30 kids and they're all, all the cribs were, were end to end and the kids all rocked because they had they'd never been cuddled. So they rocked to comfort themselves. So you got 30 odd kids clanging their cribs back and forth. And I'm, and I'm thinking, oh, what am I doing here? And right in the middle of all this whole thing, there's this wee boys looking at me. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me like I'm talking to you, Hal. That's your son. Well, come went, on now. Are you kidding me? So I went over and I picked him up and I said, look, I don't know who you are and I don't know how, but I will not rest until I find you and make you my own son. Mm. And that began a year of ridiculous oh, heartache and yeah. hope. And oh, I've, I, In fact, I've written a book I'll be talking about later on in the program called Our Bummer yeah. Lamb. And, and Andrew was a bummer lamb that had been de de rejected by its mother. And um, wow. that's how I started. I can honestly tell you, and I've gone through, this is 30 odd years now I've been doing this. I've been to Romania and Moldova over 200 times. And, and um, heartache and, and disappointment. You, 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 you'll take a, some young folk in and you'll lose them and, and your heart breaks and a wee bit goes away with them, you know, and you, you think this is not worth it. And then someone else comes into your world and you go, oh, I'll try, I'll try again. And if you're watching today, Pastor, listen to me. Be prepared to have your heart broken. Yeah. But if you're willing to take the risk to step outside your world into someone else's, I promise you, God lives in that world. And we have seen this. I mean, what's happened with us, Hal, in Moldova? Well, I, I used to go to the orphanages and I would go with my wife and we'd talk about what our dreams were. I never go. I don't have to go to an orphanage. The kids go and they speak Romanian and they slept in that bed in that, this room for 10 years. And this is what Jesus has done for me. And, and now these kids that are absolutely redeemed by the blood are now going yes. back to where they were and the redeeming others. And so wow. what you're talking about today is, is, the, is the classical heart of God outreach. Because the church has been so moral and so judgmental of so many people. And the fact of the matter is when a wee girl gets herself in trouble, it's not the time to lecture her. Yes, It's the yes. time to show her grace and a path back to life. And yes, if the church yes. could only understand that. There's a church that, I, that I've been part of for many years in, in Ohio, Columbus, called uh, Christian Assembly. And uh, they had a, they were sit, they're situated next to a school. And in this, and they, would, they had basketball courts in the, the church parking lot. And they hired a guy, listen, they hired a guy to shoo the kids away from their basketball um, hoops. And this oh, guy would no. come and the kids would come and try and walk across the, the little piece of grass between the school and the church. And, and they said, no, no, go back, go back. 
So I was there one day just counseling and, and teaching and, and having a, with a weekend thing, a, a retreat with the, the leadership. And the Lord gave me a thought, and I didn't realize how, how much close to the nerve I was going to hit. But RAMP, R-A-M-P, Reaching and Mentoring People, RAMP. He says, what you need to see that basketball hoops is as a, as a ramp ministry. Mm-hmm. What you're doing with these girls is a ramp ministry because their folks are coming to you weeping and saying, we're stunned by what you're doing. That, you're allowing them. This table here, I couldn't from the ground jump up on top of this table. But if you build me a ramp, I can get up on here with a wheelchair. And the church has, has, has ha- had this off-putting, standoffish way of dealing with people. That you've got to look a certain way and act a certain way and be a certain way before we accept you. And that is not that is completely not what the gospel is about. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. And he poured in the that's oil right. and the wine. That's, that's the gospel. And so these guys, they, 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 they said, wow. So they, they, they hired a pastor a ramp ministry pastor. And they created within their church so all the kids could come over and play basketball. Then they started having basketball tournament, tournaments and the, and the folk in the church cooked hot dogs and hamburgers for them. And then pretty soon some of the older folk in the church that were retired began to tutor their classes and, let, and, and, and one-on-one tutoring. 94% of their, of their high school graduated because of the church next door. Wow. And teachers would come and, and, and school boards would come and honor the church because they were a ramp ministry. And what right. you're doing with this ministry towards these girls, that is a ramp ministry. How many more ministries can we create? There's guys in your church that love guns. There's guys in your church that love cars. There are women in your church that love crafting. All kind of yeah. Health. And if you could create these, that, that someone that will drive past your church and say, oh, that's where all those crazy people live or, or go to, to get them into the parking lot to say, wow, that was, that's the best morning I've had for years. These folk love Yes. Me. You are yes. literally creating the harvest yeah. machine to pull the world into your world to the cross. What, right. what right. genius. What genius. You know, it's, it's um, you know, we've, you've heard it said, I know you've probably shared this as well, that social justice without spiritual justice is not justice. No. You know, it, That's it's, right. it's spiritual justice without social justice is not justice. So we, we, it's, you can dig a well, but if you don't tell them about Jesus... Absolutely. You missed the point. Yeah. So everything, that's the, that's the barometer. That's the plumb line yeah. is it, it, good work. Are we connecting it to the good news? Yeah. yeah. And but I know that many times that um, churches of different sizes will become uh, really good at making excuses because yeah. bigger outreaches means bigger dollars or, sure. well, I'll just leave that to that church. And I'll just leave that to that church. And, and I would encourage the pastors that are, that have, and I've, I've been guilty of it as well, that have said, no, Lord, that's, that's too big of a thing. I just believe that, that maybe God's trusted you with a vision, Pastor, Absolutely. that may not look like that brother's vision or that church's vision, and that's fine. But, but when, when you step into it, it's, it impacts so many people. 